The universe is full of amazing coincidences. For example, the Earth lies an optimal distance away from the Sun. The Sun, in its turn, is located in the ideal sector of the Milky Way for life to originate and evolve. There are other, finer things which are not so easily noticeable, but they remain important enough to be taken into account for our further cognition of the universe. Are these coincidences pure accidents? Or are they manifestations of some single underlying principle? Let's try to get to the bottom of it. The yellow dwarf, which is known as the Sun and which gives us light and warmth every single second, is located on the periphery of the Milky Way. As it orbits around the center of our galaxy, it follows the so-called co-rotation circle. This means that the rate of our Sun's movement accurately follows the rotation of the galaxy's spiral arms, which are stellar nurseries. Thanks to this fascinating synchronization, the solar system hardly ever crosses the arms thus keeping a safe distance away from harmful supernova flares and the heat of active stars. The diameter of this galactic orbit matters too. If the Sun were to lie closer to the center of the Milky Way, the great abundance of heavy elements would have rendered the forming planets too large and massive. Besides, the galactic core's powerful ionizing radiation would have thwarted any attempts of life to evolve and propagate on the surfaces of the planets and their satellites. On the other hand, the further from the galactic center, the much poorer the chemical diversity of elements. In this case, rocky planets of a rich chemical composition like our Earth would never have been able to form. The Sun would have been orbited solely by gas giants or icy giants at best. There are some exciting coincidences easily noticeable within the solar system too. For example, consider this. The Earth lies the ideal distance from the Sun and follows a stable orbit with a small eccentricity. Our planet's orbital trajectory is remarkably close to an ideal circle. If the trajectory's diameter shifted as little as 5% in any direction, the planet would either become icebound or would be shrouded in a dense cloud of water vapor. The bottom line is that any advanced life forms would cease to exist. In addition, the Sun itself has a number of extremely important features. It is neither too hot nor too cold, and its life expectancy is considerably long. Even though there forms a wide habitable zone around a hot star, its life expectancy is generally small. Also, its ionizing radiation is much too powerful. Colder stars, like red dwarfs, on the other hand, are capable of sustaining a habitable zone too narrow and generally too close to themselves. That is why, more often than not, planets within this zone are tidally locked to their star, and so are not equally heated up, with the temperatures on the two sides drastically different. Someone will probably offer a counter-argument here to this effect. It isn't the Earth that adapted to host humans, but rather life adapted to the conditions already present here. This is a rather sensible point, although if we delve deeper into the structure of the universe, there are some facts that cannot be accounted for by this statement. First of all, it should be mentioned that celestial bodies can have stable orbits only in three-dimensional space. In dimensions other than that, the orbits of electrons in a substance's atoms become unstable. In other words, electrons and atoms either collapse to the core or fly away into space. Thus, atoms cannot exist in a multidimensional space. A universe of this sort would only have radiation and freely floating elementary particles. Another point to consider is that there are several fundamental values that all contemporary physics is based on. They usually include the speed of light, the gravitational constant, the Planck's constant, the elementary charge, and the masses of the electron and the proton. All these values have been arrived at experimentally and today are considered to be mutually independent. However, modern science cannot say why these values are exactly like that and no other way. It is known that a free electron is a bit heavier than a proton and electron system. Without this inequality, there would be no hydrogen around because otherwise its atom would immediately turn into a neutron. By the same token, with no hydrogen around, no stars would be able to form in the universe, 
and heavier elements would never exist either. With the values of the Coulomb interaction and the powerful interaction slightly different from those gauged today, no thermonuclear synthesis reactions in stars' interiors would be possible. With an increased gravitational constant, stars would compress far too strongly. This would inevitably produce a great plethora of large and hot stars with a short lifespan. After they burned out, most matter in the universe would be buried inside black holes and neutron stars, never to become material to help form planets, satellites and other space objects. By contrast, with a decreased gravitational constant, interstellar gas would not be compressed enough to make thermonuclear reactions self-sufficient. In this case, stars would simply never flare up, and the universe would be filled with giant brown dwarfs this time. A change in the electromagnetic interaction coefficient in any direction would render chemical reactions and complex compounds virtually non-existent. On the other hand, if the Coulomb interaction were stronger than it is now, there would be no elements heavier than boron around. Their nuclei would simply be torn apart by protons' electromagnetic repulsion. Heavy elements can form in the universe thanks exclusively to a number of factors favorably combined. Here are some more exciting coincidences. Consider this. It is thanks to a special state of carbon that helium is able to transform into it. Known as carbon resonance, this phenomenon plays a crucial role in the formation of heavy elements and their spreading across the universe. It is thanks to carbon resonance that stars go supernova and shed their outer layers. Atoms born in their interiors are scattered across space to form planets, satellites, asteroids and other celestial bodies. Besides, carbon is vital for the genesis of life. Only carbon is able to create long and elaborate chains forming the base for and forking out into incredibly diverse chemical compounds. Life as we know it can exist only when based on organic compounds that would never have formed but for carbon. So now it is clear that the universe itself, as well as life in it and intelligent observers, that is humans, came to be only thanks to a number of fascinating and not readily obvious coincidences. Theories that would be able to account for this are usually beyond the scope of physics and are rather to do with philosophy. One of these is referred to as the Anthropic Principle. Even though the term itself was coined only in 1973, the ideas it is based on had been voiced much sooner. For example, we come across this idea in the works of Soviet scientist Grigory Idlis dating back to 1958, where it is expressed to this effect. What we observe is a part of the universe that is not random a priori, but one that was made suitable for the genesis and evolution of life by its special structure. This vision is referred to as the weak anthropic principle. Much later on, the so-called strong anthropic principle was formulated, according to which the universe is supposed to have certain properties that are favorable for the evolution of intelligent life, or to put it differently, an observer is needed for the universe to exist. The latter formulation is based on an idea used in quantum physics. The observer plays a crucial role, because their presence dramatically influences the behavior of particles. That is why the observer is indispensable in any quantum physics experiment. We might also see it put this way. The laws of the universe are the way they are because we can exist only in the universe the way it is. The anthropic principle implies that theoretically there may exist other universes out there, or else other parts of this single universe that would have a different set of physical laws. However, it is that either mankind is not able to observe those areas, or those hypothetical worlds cannot get real without an observer. This assumption may be further developed into a multiverse theory, or a hypothesis where basic physical constants may change their values as time goes by. Still, observations of the areas of the universe visible to us show that the fundamental values remain unchanged. The concept of a multiverse defies description in the scope of science. Generally speaking, the anthropic principle lies largely beyond the scope of the scientific view of the world and requires a metaphysical approach. Stanislav Lem commented on this to this effect. It's an attempt to account for the unknown using the unknown. Also, it is evident that the anthropic principle clashes with the mediocrity principle. 
The latter states that the area of space observable to humans isn't anything extraordinary and there would be lots and lots of similar stretches within the universe. The Milky Way, for example, doesn't boast any particularly unique structural features and its position in the large-scale structure of the universe doesn't particularly stand out among billions upon billions of other galaxies. In addition, there is the principle of space homogeneity accepted in contemporary physics, which means that natural laws are really the same from point to point in space. The correctness of this postulate is confirmed by countless observations of the world around us. Mankind has been stirred by these questions since times immemorial. Are we alone in the universe? Is our home planet unique? Or are there more Earth-like worlds in the Milky Way? Or is what we see just a kind of backdrops, with whatever there is behind them being something incredible, that would defy our understanding and therefore appears to be carefully concealed from us by the universe? Science cannot give satisfying answers to any of these questions yet, otherwise it would probably bring about a downright revolution in our perception of the world and upgrade our cognition to a whole new level. As it is, everyone is entitled to their own personal opinion.